What is going on guys? Solid Soul here bringing you guys part 3 of the Battlefield 1 Warrior Guide. Now guys, um, before I actually get right into the guide, I do want to tell ev uh, I do want to tell you guys that um, everything that is going to be said on this video, it is only solely my own opinion and uh, from my experience as well. So for those of you that disagree with anything that I'm, uh, that I'm about to say to you guys about this uh, guide and about the warrior skills, um, you guys, like, if some of you may disagree with me, and if you do, that's really okay. Um, like I said, this is uh, everything I'm gonna tell you guys. Uh, all the information is only based on my opinion and from my experience from camping uh, many years on Battlefield One. But um, yeah, if you guys disagree with anything, just feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, I would really appreciate uh, I would really appreciate it. For those people that disagree, just to like uh, post a comment, and uh, I wanna I'll, like I wanna read what you guys disagree on and uh, why you disagree, you know. But um, well, now that I, now that that's been said, um, I really just wanna get started with this guide, and uh, well, basically, uh, I don't think I have mentioned it, but um, yeah, um, this guide is going to be for those uh, I pretty sure everybody's been waiting for me to upload this guide because um the skills we're gonna be talking about the battlefield one warrior skills because everybody knows the uh, bf1 uh, battle for battlefield one the skills are like the apart from the equips the skills are the um your skill build is the most important thing besides um getting the right equipment as well but um yeah um uh, for those of you guys that have been uh, waiting for me to upload this video, I am sorry. Uh, I am sorry I delayed it for like about a day. It's because I've been busy, a little bit busy. Um, I do have like um, I'm working like on, on on different things for like Photoshop and anything. But yeah, enough chit chatting, guys. Let's get right into the guide and um, let's start off with um, mentioning and getting taking a close look at what skills we have to work with, guys. So. Uh, f our first skill being, um, it's going to be, I forgot to mention, or not forgot to mention, I forgot to write down the names because there wasn't any room or space, but um, no biggie, I can just say it to you guys. So the first skill is, of course, going to be Wild Swing. Um, wild swing. So um, level 1 is going to give you 20% additional damage, uh, level 2 being 40% additional, 80% additional, and 160% additional, and so on, so on. So basically this skill, um, all four levels are already out on the game, and... Uh, and you guys can take a like a little close a close look like on the right side. I did post as well as the uh, rage crystals. The RC is going to stand for um, um how do you call it like um casting time or not casting time like a uh, cooldown or not cooldown. I believe it's a casting time or something. But um yeah, warriors don't have any skills that uh, right now for BF1 they don't have any ca uh, casting time. So RC is going to stand for casting time. So if you see like a no, it's gonna not require. It's just gonna be an, an instant skill, you know. But um, the CT is gonna stand for cool uh, cooldown time. So um, wild swing. Um, no matter what level you get it at, even a level four and level three, level two, level one, so on, it's going never gonna take any rage crystals from you. It's not gonna require any um, casting time, and it only has a five second cooldown time. Now uh, moving on to the next skill. Uh, teleport. Teleport. Um, I did leave it as no info needed because there is basically no info needed for to uh, for like using taunting, taunting blow because I'm pretty sure nobody uses taunting blow on uh, Battlefield One. But uh, yeah, other than that, let's go on and uh, go ahead and move over to the um, hemorrhage. So hemorrhage is uh, level one. It's going to give you two damage per tick. Level two is going to give you four damage per tick. Level three is going to do give you eight damage per tick, and uh, level four is going to give you sixteen damage per tick. But uh, the problem with the skill is that level four is not yet implemented on the game. So um, what, what we're going to have to work with when we're building the skills um, later on, once I'm done introducing you guys the skills, um, there's only up to level three. So level four, I just posted it so you guys can take a look until they implement it. But once they implement it, I really hope it turns out to be um, for like for, still for Battlefield One because holy crap that's gonna be so OP guys if uh, Hemorrhage level four it, when it, when it gets implemented into the game imagine 16 damage per tick <sighs> holy cow warriors are gonna be OP <laughs> but um yeah um moving on to the Rage Crystal it is going to require two Rage Crystals so uh for Battlefield One warriors the maximum Rage Crystals they have right uh, at the moment since it's a uh, level uh, level 11 you only have two Rage Crystals. 
But um, other than that, um, it's not going to recover no uh, no casting time. It only has a one second cooldown time, guys. One second cooldown time. Holy crap! That is that is way better. That is really good for um, one second. And of course, every time you land a hemor uh, hemorrhage on anybody. Um, it's gonna do. Uh, let's say you have it at maximum level three. It's gonna. It does eight damage per tick. So eight damage, and the ticks only last for three seconds, guys. So the ticks only last for three seconds, and uh, so if you have the skill at level uh, level three, it's gonna do twenty four damage uh, for three seconds, and uh, you can just keep spamming this uh, as long as you have rage crystals. And uh, a little tip um, before I move on to the next skill. Um, uh, Rangers and warriors can actually recover uh, rage crystals, uh, double the rage crystals, um, when they land a critical hit. So um, important. That's why. That's why I mentioned like on the stats. If you're building like, a, if you have like a death build uh, with like uh, what I mentioned um, uh, on on the uh, on the stats guide and as well as the equip guide. Uh, if you have like a canine with really high dexterity, that's gonna give you. Uh, a lot of critical, so um, you can just spam away your hemorrhage and uh, yeah, just deal a ton of damage. But I'm uh, moving on to the next skill is of course going to be parry, and uh, uh, it's only so far at level three. Level four has not yet been implemented, but level three is still really good. But uh, at level one, you're gonna get a one percent um, block rate, and at level two, being two percent uh, block rate, and level three, uh, four percent block rate. It's not gonna require any crystals whatsoever because. This is a passive skill, so once you activate this skill and put like a skill point on it, it's already activated. It is a, that's what uh, passive skills are. Uh, it's not an active skill, but uh, require does it require casting? Nope, it does not require casting. And the cooldown time, uh, of course, it's a passive skill, so it's going to have a cooldown time of zero seconds. Now moving on to the next skill is going to be counter attack. So in order to use this skill, guys, in order to use counter attack, you have to have at least one point added into your parry so if you want to use counter attack you gotta have one point into parry and uh, for uh, for these skill boats I'm gonna be telling you guys right now um, you're gonna be you're gonna be seeing a lot of counter attack but uh, yeah moving on to the skill um, levels uh, level one counter attack is gonna give you a hundred percent um, damage additional that is a uh, level two is gonna give you 160 damage additional and level three is gonna uh, give you 180 uh, percent additional but level four has not yet been implemented guys so um, don't worry about level four. Some of uh, all of these skills level four uh, have not been implemented except for the wild swing IV. Um, so uh, does it require any crystals? No, it does not require any crystals. Uh, no cool. Uh, no, it does not require any casting as well, and it has the cooldown time of four to five seconds. So let's say you you're fighting a ranger or a warrior and you block a skill. Uh, you get you get like a little animation that says block, uh, you, and you have your counter attack on your thing. You have like a one one. So your once you get a block, anytime you get a block, you're gonna your counter attack is gonna be able you're gonna be able to use it. But if you don't get a block, you won't be able to use it. It's only when you get blocks. Resist if you resist an attack from mages, that uh, parry does not activate. Just keep that in mind, guys. But um yeah, so every time you basically block an attack, uh, your counter attack is gonna be activated, so you can use it. So uh, you can use it, but it's not like hemorrhage since it doesn't waste any rich crystals. You cannot spam this skill as fast as hemorrhage. Which, uh, because every time you use it, no matter how many blocks you get, you can only use a counter attack every four second, every four to five seconds, guys. So keep that in mind. And uh, moving on to the next skill is, of course, going to be Bull Rush, a really good support skill for uh, warriors. Uh, level one is going to give you a 24 additional speed boost. Level two being 36 percent additional speed boost, and level three being a uh, um, 48 percent additional speed boost. So level four uh, is going to give you 60 percent additional speed boost, but uh, that is not implemented uh, yet, and uh, it does not require any rage crystals as you guys can see and uh, no cool no casting time as well and a cooldown time of 20 seconds so if you whenever you use the uh, bull rush and you gotta wait 20 seconds in order to you uh, use it again so keep that in mind when you're fighting rangers guys you gotta when fight uh, not rangers mages you gotta keep that in mind since mages uh, freeze you so keep that in mind and uh, moving on to the next skill drowsiness and uh, drowsiness uh, <laughs> um, the o it's only 
implemented at level 1. Level 2, level 3, level 4 have not been implemented, but I'm just going to read the um, the description for it. Uh, e either ways. So level 1 is going to give you a uh, 5 second uh, slowdown for movement uh, movement speed slowdown for any target that is inflicted with drowsiness for 5 seconds. And uh, level 2 is going to give you 6 second uh, uh, slow for 6 seconds. Level 3 is going to give you a sl uh, movement speed slow of 7 seconds and level 4 being 8 seconds. So like I said, it's uh, this go is only uh, level 1 out so far and uh, it does require the same r two rage crystals as uh, as your main skill which is a uh, hemorrhage and uh, no require casting nope it does not require casting and it has the cool cooldown time of one second so just like drowsiness you can spam um, I mean not just like drowsiness just like your hemorrhage you can spam drowsiness but the bad thing about drowsiness is um, at the since it reduces the enemy's movement speed by a lot for like five seconds um, the damage is cut down to half, so that's the that's the con. Uh, to be honest, I would rather prefer to spam hemorrhage. So whenever you have drowsiness, do not use drowsiness. You can only use it once, unless you see like the enemy is like with low HP, and uh, that's when you know or half HP. When they're like uh, lower than ha uh, at half HP and uh, and below, that's your uh, that's the that's the that's the chance to uh, use your drowsiness on them just to slow them down, you know. And uh, moving on to the next skill is uh, going to be wild charge. And wild charge, uh, it's uh, for battlefield one. You can get it up to level three. So level four has not been implemented, but level one is going to give you a cooldown. It just reduces the cooldown time. It doesn't increase the damage. So uh, it's just going to be cooldown time 15 seconds. Uh, and level 2 is going to reduce it to 14 seconds, level 3 is going to be a cooldown time of 13 seconds, and level 4 is going to be a cooldown time of 12 seconds. And uh, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, level 4 has not been implemented, and uh, it does not require any rage crystals, it does not require any casting, and uh, the cooldown time, uh, uh, if you have it at level 1, which uh, you can only get the skill at uh, up to level 1 on Battlefield 1, so you're always going to be a 15 second cooldown. So, um... Really good support skill as well. So um, now that I mentioned uh, every and described to you what uh, each of the skills do and uh, the cooldown time for them and etc. And uh, let's go ahead and start building. Actually, go not building, but uh, just uh, let's move on to the first build, which is going to be as you, as you guys can see from the title. So the first build is going to be a PVP build, you guys, uh, which is optimized for rangers, guys. So for those of you. Uh, before I actually start building it and uh, just a little heads up guys for all of these builds we're gonna be building them I'm gonna be building these builds with you um, Live as you guys are watching the video I'm gonna be building them live and telling you why I'm putting a point on that specific skill You know just to be just to give you guys the most strict uh, the most information that I can give you guys uh, Well, I think that's gonna be really good <laughs> a really good information for you guys But uh, yeah, like I said um, before I get into the skill building and adding points to the skill to the skills, uh, this is like I said, this is gonna be a PvP build versus Rangers. That's gonna be the first build. So, this build is only optimized and is only, uh, yeah, optimized and useful. Only use this build, don't use it otherwise. Don't use this build for uh, battlefield, uh, when you're uh, when you're gonna join the battlefield. Only use this build when you're, uh, let's say, when a, uh, let's say you're a Cyrus and a Lanos comes to Cyrus and he challenges you or, or through Kakoa. Hey, hey, I wanna, I wanna PVP you one on one on like uh, on the beach or something. So that's your chance. Um, so this build is gonna be just use a uh, reset potion to reset your skills and add these points to it. So it, because if you if you happen to use the skill build, uh, the one I'm gonna be showing you guys and uh, showing you guys and building it with you guys um, live. Um, if you if you happen to use the skill build when you're like uh, one versus one a ranger uh, uh, like a one on one on like the beach where you guys or wherever you guys do the PvP, um, it's gonna give you an edge over the other ranger if the other ranger does not have a optimized build. So keep that in mind, guys. So um, let's go ahead and start actually building it. So for each uh, for each build, we we're only gonna have a limited uh, points to put uh, to put on each skill. So. Right now, for uh, for any BF1, be it a mage, be it a ranger, be it a warrior, you only have 10 skill points to waste on uh, on skills. So um, let's start with wild swing. No, not wild swing. Let's actually start with our support skill. So for those of you guys that don't know what the support skills a warrior on Battlefield One has, we're gonna go ahead and add our first point into. Give me a second. 
Uh, like I said, I'm using Photoshop for this, guys, and I'm using um, OBS screen recorder, so I'm not. Uh, it wastes less time and uh, it actually makes it faster. So, anyways, let's go ahead and, like I said, and add a skill point to Bullrush. So we're gonna add a skill point to level one since you can only get it at level one on uh, Battlefield One. So we're gonna add our first uh, point into the support, which is gonna be a world uh, bull rush for um, for a uh, for a warrior build that's gonna be held. And uh, the reason why we're adding a point onto bull rush is because you need the extra speed if the ranger you're fighting has ensnare. And uh, also for the stun because you know rangers are ranged and warriors are melee, so you gotta get you gotta you you gotta have the speed boost in case you get stunned to uh, to close in to close the gap between you guys. So that's why um, it's a really good support skill. You need to have the skill, guys. So moving on to our second support skill, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go to counter attack, guys. So we're gonna be adding a point to there we go. So we're gonna be whoa did I add it? Oh sorry sorry sorry. <laughs> My mistake. Um, not counter attack. Sorry, guys. Uh, counter attack is definitely not a support skill, but uh, we're gonna go. There it is. Did it get it? Yeah, it got it. So we're gonna be adding a skill point. The next, the second skill point into another support skill, which is your wild charge. And I think everybody knows this. You need bull. You need bull rush to close the gap for rangers when you get stunned and uh, and if you happen to get in snare. And you, of course, you need wild charge as well, just in case you're because. Um, Going back over here to uh, the description of the skill, Bull Rush has a cooldown time of 20 seconds. So if you use Bull Rush, you cannot use Bull Rush again. So you're going to be in a little bit trouble if you don't have Wild Charge uh, as well when you're PvPing a Ranger. So let's say uh, you get a snare, you get stunned at the same time. The warrior, the Ranger has a little distance on you. You use Bull Rush to close in the gap. Boom, you get close. And then you're spamming your skills. But uh, you get stunned, you get a snare. Uh, he gets a little bit, uh, he gets the distance again. So. You gotta have wild charge because uh, if you use bull rush, you have wild charge to close in the gap. So you're gonna have two gap closers, which is a uh, bull rush and wild charge. And uh, also wild charge uh, gives you that uh, stun as well. So you close the gap, you and as well you get the stun on them. So pretty good. And uh, moving on to our next points, we're gonna be adding since uh, you are gonna be fighting rangers. So we're gonna be adding, as you guys can tell, we're gonna be adding one, two. And three, there we go, guys. So we're gonna be adding three skill points into parry because since you're gonna be fighting rangers, the you gotta you gotta get the maximum defense when fighting a ranger because um, parry is gonna give you a four percent block on uh, when you're fighting against rangers, and that is really good, guys, because uh, that's gonna give you more defense, like a huge boost to your defense when fighting rangers. So you're gonna be getting a lot of a lot of blocks. Besides the low damage, especially if you have like over 50, uh, 50 plus armor, um, which is recommended for a warrior to have. Recommended like 45 plus, uh, 45, 50, uh, 55, etc. But uh, yeah, if you you gotta get the skill uh, parry at level three to give you that 4% block boost. If you get it at one, if you uh, so it's really recommended. You're gonna have a huge added defense when fighting rangers. So now you got uh, you got two gap you got uh, two gap closers, the bull rush, the wild charge, and the three points added into parry now that makes uh, five skill points so next we're gonna be adding some attack so because we need some attack you know so like I said every skill build every skill build skill build and uh, on battlefield one your best attack you can ever use is of course none other than hemorrhage guys keep that in mind hemorrhage is your main skill this is the skill you're gonna be spamming guys this is the skill you're gonna be spamming because uh, apart from doing eight damage, it also does it also the bleed also penetrates if the mage has shield, it penetrates that as well, and it also disrupts uh, mages from using juice. So this skill is really OP, guys. Uh, it's really good for battlefield one ranges, and it's gonna be your main attack on every build. Every BF one warrior should have three points added into hemorrhage. None. Uh, that's enough said, guys. So three points we're gonna be adding into hemorrhage, and. Uh, just a little quick before I move on to the next uh, uh, skill, p uh, adding the next skill points. Take a look at this Wild Swing versus Hemorrhage. Wild Swing has a 5 second cooldown while uh, Hemorrhage has a 3 second cooldown. And of course, if you can get Wild Swing to level 4, then that's really good. But uh, Hemorrhage is still going to be better for uh, on Battlefield 1 than Wild Swing IV. And that's my honest opinion, guys, because uh, Hemorrhage disrupts and uh, you can just spam this. You can. 
you can spam this. You can spam this skill. Uh, it has one second, and uh, uh, Wild Swing has a five second. So you can just spam this skill as long as you have a death build with uh, with a really good sturdy canine. You can spam the skill with a really good pet and a Mother Nature and and et cetera, like a Dark Skull, some critical. You're gonna be spamming this skill non-stop for days. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, keep that in mind, guys. So uh, three added. So that makes three sits. Uh, seven eight. So we got two skill points left, guys. So we got two skill points left, and uh, we're gonna be adding one skill point. Um, where is it at? Where is where's my counter attack? I can't seem to find it on my Photoshop. Okay, so there it is. We're gonna be adding one skill point into counter attack, guys. Um, and the reason being is because since you're gonna be fighting a ranger and your parry as a is at level three, we need a little bit more attack. So we're so level one on counter attack. I mean the max you could get it at is a level three, of course. But uh, yeah, uh, only one skill point is needed for this since you since it gives you a 140% additional um, boost to your uh, normal attack when you use it. So you're gonna be getting since you have like three points into parry, you're gonna be getting a lot of blocks when fighting rangers. Oh, trust me, you're gonna be you're gonna be getting like a shit ton of blocks. So uh, like I said, only one skill point we're gonna be putting into counter attack. So you have another attack skill. So when you close in, you get a block. He he uses imp shot, and trust me, you're gonna be blocking a lot of imps, a lot of imps. Trust me, <laughs> and. Um, Let's say you uh, he he uses impact shot on you and uh, you get the block. Then you use wild charge, get the bleed in first, and then use the counter attack. Counter attack is an instant skill, so you can uh, use uh, to, like quickly tap on hemorrhage and go for the counter attack. So that's gonna you're gonna get the bleed and then you're gonna get the counter attack damage as well. And uh, for the last skill, um, it's really it's really up to you guys. Like if you guys want a little bit more damage, you guys can go uh, for uh, one skill point onto wild swing. Or if you want to um, slow down the enemy, you can just go for a uh, drowsiness, which, in my opinion, I would honestly just put it for, uh, you know, like, get a little bit more um, damage, because... So we're going to be adding the last skill point into Wild Swing. So just put it at one. One point into Wild Swing, guys. So other than that, it's going to be uh, one point. Um, I mean, like I said, I, uh, you guys do have the chance of changing last skill point uh, between Wild Swing or Drowsiness. But the reason being why I always put it into Wild Swing when PvP in Rangers is because... Um, because since you already have um, Hemorrhage, it wastes two uh, crystals, um, and uh, Drowsiness wastes the same amount of crystals. But it only it only provides you with a slow for 5 seconds, and uh, the damage is not going to do anything. <laughs> it's going to do like, uh, it does have the damage, so that is... Um, really not uh, rec worth it for me you know that yeah that's what I'm trying to say but uh, yeah this is this is the most optimized build for PvP in a ranger guys keep that in mind and uh, of course if you guys do have wild swing IV you guys can uh, switch it around you know if, you, if for those of for those of you that are warriors on battlefield 1 and uh, you guys have uh, wild swing IV the level 4 on wild swing unlocked then uh, by all means you guys can uh, switch around um, like switch around your he three points into hemorrhage add them to wild swing IV so you can have it like this uh, give me a second so of course you can you can uh, you can have it like this you can add like uh, three points into not three points but yeah you can add you can definitely add like four points into there and uh, if you guys have uh, for those of you guys that have um, uh, level 4 on Wild Swing Unlock, you can go for that and then just, uh, you know, just give me a second here. Wow. Just reduce like the uh, the hemorrhage skill, so just keep like one skill added into your into your hemo. If you guys, uh, if you guys want to, if you guys, uh, like I said, if you guys have Wild Swing IV only, oh, and of course, this is only applied to those of you that have the level 4 skill on Wild Swing. If you guys do, then you can switch it around like, um, Put four skills, uh, four skill points into there, so that makes it three, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, and then you're gonna, of course, by doing that, you're gonna be taking away one uh, skill point from uh, counter attack, which uh, you're not gonna be having that uh, little boost damage on counter attack. But um, yeah, that's only if you guys um, have the level four, so you guys can mess around with that. But um, for the support skills, it is really recommended you guys have these skills by whenever you're PvPing a ranger, you always gotta have three points into parry, one into bull rush, and one into wild charge. No matter what, the rest of the skill points you guys can mess around with them. But um, like I already mentioned, like I already showed you guys, the most optimized in my opinion is. Um, give me a second. 
I'm gonna be sh uh, posting it right now, guys. Just give me, bear with me for a second. And I believe that's it. No, no, I gotta go for hemorrhage. Uh, where is it at? Okay, there it is. Yeah, um, like I mentioned before, this is the most optimized. In my opinion, I really like the skill build as you guys uh, have seen it again. But yeah, like I mentioned, um, you guys can just mess around with it. And uh, I think this sums up the PvP build for uh, when you're versus scene um, Rangers. So uh, moving on to the next build, guys, we're going to be building is, of course, going to be another PvP build. And this time is going to be against Mages. So, holy crap, guys. So this is like the most interesting skill build you guys, uh, uh, in my opinion... When you're like a Battlefield 1 warrior, Rangers, with the skill build, I, with the, with this skill build, you're gonna have an easy time against Rangers. And I, and uh, yeah, like I mentioned a lot of times, you can mess around with the, like how you want to build it. But uh, now for mages, like a lot of warriors have problem with mages, like mages. <laughs> Uh, of course, mages are are made to beat warriors, and rangers are made um, developed into the game to uh, counter mages. But uh, other than that, we're gonna start off the build with our support skills, as always. So we're gonna be adding one point into our support skill, which is gonna be bull rush, of course. Because why am I adding one point into bull rush? Because when you're PvP mages, the mage is by all means it is going to have freeze it's going to have freeze no matter what so you need bull rush basically if you get frozen just save it only when you get frozen so uh, when the mage freezes you she's gonna be wasting her mana because why I mean sh sure yeah she's gonna be wasting mana because um, as soon just only save your bull rush when you get frozen so when she freezes you you can click on bull rush and it, you're gonna get defrosted you're gonna escape from the freeze and of course freeze has uh... for mages her freezing skill freezing trap is gonna have a it has less cooldown time than uh... bull rush bull rush has a twenty second so in order to counter that uh... that uh... that situation right there you are gonna be adding one more onto another support skill into ca uh... wild charge so just in case, like I said, uh, Freezing Trap has a lower cooldown time than Bull Rush. So if when you use it once, um, you gotta wait 20 seconds. And by those, if you don't have Wild Charge, if you don't have uh, like a one point added into Wild Charge, you're gonna get. You're sooner or later you're gonna get frozen, and uh, the mage is gonna just gonna attack you for free, get free hits. So um, you you gotta have another uh, support skill just to close in the gap and to escape the freeze. So Wild Charge is gonna be that skill, and uh, of course it's gonna provide you with a stun, which is really good. So um, this time for mages, you don't really need parry because parry only activates when you're fighting. Uh, when you're up against mage, uh, not mages, rangers and warriors, so parry is useless. Taunty blow is useless. Uh, I just put it in there, just uh, because it is one of the skills we'll be up on warriors get. But uh, don't even, don't even look at taunting blow, guys. <laughs> it is really useless. But um, okay, now we got two skill points wasted, and of course we do. Of course we need attack, and uh, like I said, every build, every build of mine always has three points added into the main skill, which is going to be hemorrhage. Like I keep saying guys, this is, good. this is your main attack skill, main damage dealer, Hemori. So that makes 3 points into it, I think I already explained it, this is going to give you 8 damage per tick. You're going to be doing 8 damage every 1 second, plus the bleeding damage, that's 24 guys, for 3 seconds. It does not stack, just keep that in mind, it does not stack, but if you keep spamming the skill, you can keep doing it. So this is really good. Um, and then moving on, so that makes three, four, five. Okay, so we got five more skill points to spend. So the five skill points to spend, we're gonna go be going to wild swing here, since um, counter attack is not needed because you can only use counter attack when you're PVP uh, when you have parry, when you have at least one point into parry. But since we don't, and uh, this is a mage PVP, so uh, we're gonna be adding three points. Enough said. Into wild swing. So. Um, other than that, I'm gonna be adding. Where is it at? So uh, that's uh, a little bit more damage for mages because you need the most damage for uh, when dealing with the mage. So um, where's drowsiness? We're also gonna be adding one point into drowsiness. So that makes three, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, why the point into drowsiness? Because as, and when you get the stun on the mage, or when you um, get close to the mage with um, bull rush, first you want to go for the uh, drowsiness to slow down the mage. 
and then go for um since you use drowsiness you're not gonna have any um rage crystals so go for the wild swing next get in uh if you get a critical you're gonna good if uh, like when you land the wild swing and you land a critical you're gonna have enough crystals to go ahead and uh um, go for the hemorrhage, but if you don't, then uh, go wild, go for wild swing, get the get the get the rage crystal, and then go for auto attacks and so on and so forth. So that's already nine skill points. So for the last skill point, you want to go for um, taunting blow does waste rage crystal. So like I said, that's not really needed. So for the for pretty much for the last skill, um, it's really recommended. I mean, if you have the fourth skill on wild swing, you can go ahead and. Uh, Finish up and uh, for the la uh, add your last point to Wild Swing IV. That's only if you guys have um, Wild Swing IV unlocked. But other than that, it doesn't really matter where you guys put your last skill point when um, when uh, PVP in a mage. So I say just go ahead and just add it into Parry. You know, just add the last point to uh, the last skill point. Doesn't really matter. Just add it to anywhere. You could put it on Taunting Blow. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend it, but just uh, just use it as a placeholder since. Um, since they PvP, um, I mean, like yeah, like I mentioned a lot of times, since they're versus in majors, mages, um, it's really recommended if you guys have uh, the fourth skill on it. On, if you guys do have, like I keep saying, just put it. Go ahead and by all means, just put it on, on there. You're gonna be killing mages like nothing, um, pretty much. It really depends if the mage is like a really pro, like with flame shock IV, and uh, and the mage knows what she's doing. And uh, she doesn't just like randomly waste her uh, mana and uh, so forth and so on. But uh, yeah, this is the most optimized build you guys see right here. And uh, like I keep mentioning, um, if you guys don't have Wild Swing IV, don't worry. Just take it off. Take off the skill point on Wild Swing IV uh, level four, and uh, just put it on uh, onto Parry or uh, yeah, just put it onto Parry and. Um, and you're you're still gonna do really good with uh, with the skill boat. I mean, how do you call it? You're still gonna do pretty pr not pretty good. You're gonna, you're still gonna do really good against mages even if you don't have the level four on lockdown wild swing. So um yeah, so that uh, that concludes the ranger and the mage. Now moving on to PVP build versus warriors. Now when you're versus in a warrior, of course you're gonna the first thing that comes to mind when versus in warriors is they don't have range attacks. They can only attack you from close distance so this is your chance to go ahead and go for three points into parry enough said guys we are versus in a, um, a, uh, a warrior you don't even need bull rush so for this when you're um, one versus one a warrior um, anywhere like I keep mentioning you don't need bull rush you don't need wild charge because bull rush, even even if the warrior runs away, that means if he runs away and never comes back, like goes away to another map just because he doesn't want to die, or you're about to kill him and he runs away, don't chase him. He, you you if he does that, then you won. You won the PVP, guys. So uh, the, bull rush is not even needed here because if he wants to attack you, he has to get close as well. So it's no point on adding any points into bull rush. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Take don't use bull rush when you're. Um, one versus one uh, warriors, as well as drowsiness. You don't need drowsiness. Why would you want to slow if you, uh, he's not going to run away from you? And the uh, wild charge, the stun is not worth it. It is only the stun is only worth it when you're uh, when you're up against a ranger and a mage. But on a warrior, if the warrior has three points into parry, it's, it's going to get blocked. It's it's going to have a, a really high chance of getting blocked, and the damage is not going to do nothing. If the warrior has like a 45 plus armor, the damage is not going to do nothing, guys. Not even worth putting a point when you're 1 versus 1 uh, um, warriors. But the thing that does matter is, of course, your main skill here, guys. You're definitely going to need the skill because the bleeding damage is really good. Warriors and, ranger warriors and rangers don't have any healing moves to heal themselves at... Uh, only mages have that. So Helmel, we're gonna be adding three points into there. Okay, guys, we're gonna be adding three points into there. And other than that, uh, where is it at? Where is it at? We're gonna be adding one point into counter attack. Okay, guys, and the rest. So that makes three, six, seven. We're gonna be adding the rest into. Whoa! Whoops! Is that the wrong skill? <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong skill. Sorry, Zach. I have it like I have them like so close to each other. But yeah, the three skill points left, we're gonna be adding them into. You guys guess, is it? 
Wild Swing level 3. There we go. So this is gonna give you the most damage and the most defense against a Battlefield 1 Warrior when you're up against 1 versus 1 in a Warrior. And of course, this is the most optimized build. I really recommend it when you're up against uh, Warriors. And uh, as for the counter attack 1 point and the uh, Wild Swing 3 points, you guys can go ahead and mess around with that. You guys can go ahead and uh, pretty much just go to... Where is it at? You guys can pretty much just go and... Um, if you guys want to use 3 points into counter attack, you guys are feel free to experiment with uh, the build. But um, other than that, if you got, when you guys do experiment, when you guys do experiment with my builds, um, keep like for this build. If you want to experiment with counter attack, like switching, uh, putting three points into counter attack and one into wild swing, or four points into wild swing and uh, none at counter attack. Um, yeah, just keep the Hemo at three. Always when you're one versus so for this build, always keep hemorrhage at three points and parry at three points because that's going to give you the most. Uh, efficient defense and uh, the efficient block the, and uh, good, really good damage with the Hemel as well so yeah like I m keep mentioning you guys can go ahead and mess around with that and uh, pretty much uh, where is counter attack okay, the counter attack is right there so let me put it back here just for those, for those of you guys there you go so that sums up the so we already got done with the PvP uh, Ranger build we got the mage uh, up against mages build and the versus warrior build now the BF build. This is the build you're going to be using throughout every single BF you guys join. Um, and uh, of course, the last three builds I mentioned are only when you're up against one versus one, guys. Keep that in mind. One versus one. That's when you're going to use like a reset potion and uh, just to win the PvP. You know, <laughs> who doesn't want to win a PvP? But um, yeah, I'm, I'm moving on to the BF build. So for the BF build, um, it's really since there's all kinds of uh, players on BF. There's mages. There's rangers. They're going to have First, we're going to be taking a look at the support skills, guys. So, for the support skills, we're, we're going to be adding some support skills here. Always add support skills on the, um, on the on, on every single thing. But uh, yeah, we're gonna I'm going to be adding some points as you guys can tell. One point into bull rush for mages on BF, and uh, of course also for rangers, and then uh, wild charge just to get the stun and escape ice and uh, etc and then we're gonna be adding as always like I said when I used to play warrior this is your main skill main skill I don't have to say anything more about that we're gonna be adding three points into uh, hemorrhage so that makes one two three three four five so that makes five now we're gonna be adding some into wild swing okay where is it at um, we're gonna be adding where is it one two Three, so that's gonna be three points more added to wild swing. So that makes three wild swing, three hammo, one bull rush, and one wild charge. That three, six, seven, eight. So that makes eight. Now for the last, I mean, I could go for the drowsiness, which I really, really want to go for the drowsiness here, guys. But um, uh, I mean, I don't really want to go for it. I am gonna go for the drowsiness. So you're gonna have drowsiness just in case for those. Um, since this is a BF build, this build is optimized to give you the best um, teamwork. Uh, as possible because you got the stun to stun um, fleeing enemies and since you're the warrior you're going to be taking the lead so you're going to be stunning them with wild charge uh, enemies are escaping and then you're going to be slowing down the enemies that are uh, trying to escape uh, from your team you know and then of course we're going to be adding just to have the block added one point into parry so that makes uh, three six seven eight nine ten that makes your six uh, skill points of course if you guys don't want um, the slow, yeah, like I said, this is the most optimized build for a BF build uh, on BF because BF is all about teamwork. It does not matter how pro you are, it does not matter. If you guys don't have teamwork, um, you guys will not win Battlefield. Just keep that in mind because you could be uh, the most pro mage, like let's say you have the best equips on a ranger, boom, and you go on the front lines and you got mages, but you guys don't have teamwork. Sorry about that. And you're like uh, you're on you're like on the front line and up against like ten lanos or five lanos. It does not matter if those lanos have uh, sh uh, like decent if they have decent equips, you're gonna die if you don't if those mages don't HS you, you know if you they uh, and if the warriors don't help you out and as well. So you gotta have teamwork on every battlefield, guys. That is really so. This build is optimized for teamwork, guys. 
is it, it is the best. It's gonna give you the best teamwork you can for your team uh, teammates. And uh, yeah, you, if you guys have teamwork, this build is gonna work really good. I mean, if you like, I keep saying on this uh, video throughout this whole video, you guys can go ahead and mess around with the skill build, but um, you're not gonna find anything more optimized because you could go, you could go, you could put, add, you could add some point into Wild Swing IV. And then uh, take away one from I don't know drowsiness, and then uh, or or from parry, and that's gonna give you a little bit more attack. But if you take a point away from parry, where um, where is gonna be your block for rangers or for warriors, where that parry can save you from uh, you you don't you never know if, if it can save you or not, you know. But um yeah, this build is optimized for BF, and uh, that pretty much covers everything, guys. And I'm just gonna show you guys really fast right there. So yeah, that pretty much uh, covers all the builds that I uh, went um, that I m went ahead and built for you guys live. You guys are witnessing, like I said, this live. So um, that pretty much sums in the whole uh, three parts of the B uh, Battlefield One Warrior uh, series guide. And uh, of course, I am gonna be releasing a another video just for the newly added items, which um, or from the update, which is gonna be the costumes, like the best costumes. And uh, the gyms as well, but other than that, this guide is uh, part three of this guide is finished, guys. I um, if you guys have any builds, like any crazy builds or any of your own builds that you guys think are good, go ahead and post them in the comment section below. I would like to see your build, uh, your builds, your warrior builds. Uh, your ranger builds, your major builds, and whatever on the comment section below, I would really enjoy seeing that and explain why. If you guys do post a, a skill build on the comment section, explain the reason why uh, you added uh, like three points um, onto a uh, wild swing or three points into counter attack, etc. So I just explain your reason behind that. I would really, really uh, appreciate that and uh, not appreciate that. I would really, it would be really, really cool to uh, you know to read those. And to uh, get those skill builds from you guys, but uh, yeah. Anyways, guys. Um, uh, like I said, I am gonna be releasing part four of this guide and the last part uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, if you guys want me to re uh, release a Battlefield uh, Battlefield One video, um, as well, and uh, I can I can definitely do that for you guys tomorrow as well. Uh, like I could be uploading a GAD video and a uh, and a uh, Battlefield video. But yeah, and uh, as for the upload schedule, it is gonna. I am trying to upload uh, one video per day or maybe two videos per day. I don't know about that, guys. Um, if you guys want two videos a day, just leave a comment in the comment section. Um, and if you guys want one video, uh, do the same. Just leave a comment and. Um, yeah, this concludes everything, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, as always, if you guys are enjoying my channel and the content I'm creating for you guys, just be sure to drop a like on the bottom of this video. And of course, be sure to drop a comment or leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, be sure to smash the subscribe button to to be part of the pol uh, Slowpoke crew. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. And I'll catch you guys on the next episode.